Today we're going to look at the Buffalo Air Station and configuring a guest network with the DDWRT enabled firmware. First thing you want to do is log in to your router, which is default IP address 192.168.11.1. Default password is admin and the default password is password. Now we also want to go over to the buffalotech.com website and if you head to downloads and type in WZR 600 DHP 600 DHP then we can search and you'll see a commands file right here the commands to input in DDWRT so download this text file uh, it's very small and that's going to be this commands file here we're going to open that up and we're going to be using this a little bit later on so let's go back to our web interface for our DDWRT router and we're going to click on the wireless section first we want to configure our wireless 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz so I'm going to go ahead and set this to turbo get a wide band on there and I'm going to name my SSIDs now you'll see here that we have those stored so I'm going to go ahead and hit save which is not going to apply those settings yet we're going to go ahead and build out the virtual network now you'll see two virtual interfaces you can create a guest network for the 2.4 gigahertz mode as well as the 5 gigahertz mode I'm just going to go ahead and do the 5 gigahertz now and you can call it whatever you want just call this guest 5G and then I'll save that if you were to apply it it would actually redo the configuration and reboot the wireless portion we're, we'll go ahead and wait until after we do the wireless security so let's head there and let's set a password for these I'm just gonna go ahead and name my password should probably go a little bit stronger than just password though and then we're going to go ahead and save those settings. I'm not setting a password for the virtual interface because I'm going to make that my guest network. After that we want to go over to the setup area and then networking. First thing we want to do here is create another bridge. We're going to set this to BR1 and we can turn STP off. We're going to go ahead and apply the settings now. This is the first apply we're doing because we need to apply it, otherwise it won't build out the BR1 that we have to use for other things. The IP address, this is going to be what your secondary network is going to be called for your guest network. I'm going to go ahead and make my 192.168.5.1. So you can set this however you want. I'm, I'm setting mine there. You could do 192.168.01 or 10.10.10.1, whatever you prefer. Then we'll go ahead and just make this a class C255255250. And I'm going to go ahead and save those settings. Now we can go down to assign the bridge. I'm going to go ahead and assign BR1 to our virtual network, which is ATH 1.1. And then we're going to save those. And lastly, on this page, we'll go down to the add a new DHCP server which is going to use what we set for the bridge one so I'm going to add a DHCP server scroll back down we we'll use to the bridge we want it to assign with the bridge and now let's just apply those settings you'll notice here it's picked up the 192.168.5.1 and it's going to start giving out IP addresses based on the 192.168.5.100 and it's going to give out max 50 of them and you can set a lease time if you want. I'm going to go ahead and just show you, you can actually adjust that so I'm going to set mine to 120 with 50 which means it would give out 120 to 170 and I'll apply that. You could set it to 2 uh, all the way up to 254 and give out one so that's up to you. After we have that completed we're going to move over to the services area. It's where we're going to have to copy and paste our DNS mask. We need DNS mask to be enabled. It is enabled by default just make sure that it is. In this additional mask options we're going to go ahead and open our commands file now and you'll see here I have the interface already configured for BR1 if you if you rename that something else or you called it something else you'll have to adjust the BR1 to what you set it as. I've also created this by default 192.168.5.1 being as that's what I had put in if you change that you'll have to change it here you'll have to change it here and here. Now I adjusted mine to 120 to 170 because I gave out 50 addresses so make sure you make that adjustment here if you've made it something different. I'm going to go ahead and copy these three lines. You don't have to copy the top one. And we're going to add that in for our DNS mask additional options. We'll just immediately apply that one. 
the last place that we're going to go is going to be in the administration area and then we're going to go to commands now I have two sets of commands here one that has enhanced restrictions and one that's just a default script to make sure that it bridges the your WAN port so that way they'll have internet access right now it would might give out an IP address but they wouldn't have internet access so we're going to copy this firewall script and I'm going to add it into here I'm going to run these commands right now so that way it'll actually take hold and it, it's going to reset my Wi-Fi networks so if you already if you're looking at your Wi-Fi you'll see it resets it here I'm going to go ahead and now I'm going to leave these commands here I'm going to save firewall so that's going to save my tables in here we want that to stay and after you're done we can actually test our networks so I'm gonna go here to right click and open network sharing center I'm gonna change my adapter and I'm gonna take a look I have a 5 gig adapter installed and you'll see here now I have my private 2.4 private 5 gigahertz and my guest 5 gigahertz network I'm gonna go ahead and open up the private one first so we can make sure that it is showing the proper IP address scheme that we have it should show should give me an IP address 192.168.11. something. Now that that's connected, we'll go to status and details. And you'll see I am I'm pulling 11.111. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. And let's change over to our open network, which is my guest 5G. And this should give me a 5. Dot something address. the details and you'll notice I picked up a 5.153 and to finalize and verify we can just make sure that we go to Google and we aren't cached we aren't, we're pulling up actual new data there we go we'll pull up something on Hewlett Packard and so this is uncached data that is being shown right here so it is full it is actually routing and it's on its own segregated network and that is all you have to do thanks for watching